Hello, this is Dr. Ryan Kazemi. Uh, today I would like to talk about maxillary sinus perforation, which is a type of complication that can occur following teeth extractions. The floor of the maxillary sinus lies directly above the posterior or back upper teeth, extending from the second premolars to the third molars, and also occasionally as far anterior or forward uh, to the first premolars. The anatomy of the maxillary sinus floor can vary from person to person. In some, the floor is well above the roots of the maxillary teeth, with bone being present between the roots and the floor of the maxillary sinus. While in others, the floor may follow the roots more closely and sometimes even wrapping itself around the roots, a condition known as pneumatization. Uh, in this case, there is either minimal or no bone between the sinus floor and the tip of the roots. Pneumatization of the maxillary sinus around the upper uh, teeth roots increases the risk of inadvertent sinus perforation or opening following extraction of upper molars and also in some instances the second premolars. This risk is enhanced even further in presence of periapical infection or abscess where there is already a bony defect. When the sinus appears to be pneumatized or when the teeth present themselves with periapical lesions on conventional x-rays, it's important to obtain a cone beam CT scan to properly diagnose and assess the proximity of the roots to the sinus and also the degree of possible existing defects that can lead to a perforation following tooth extraction. Sinus perforations, uh, if undiagnosed or untreated, can persist and lead to oral antral fistulas, which is basically a continuous opening between the sinus and the mouth. Oral antral fistulas can result in sinus infections as well as fluid drainage from the mouth to the nose. With proper diagnostics, a comb beam CT scan, and the surgeon and the patient can properly discuss the likelihood of the sinus perforation well in advance and plan for its management prior to the surgery. It's also important to manage the sinus perforation at the time that it occurs to prevent it from progressing to a chronic oral antral fistula. So let's uh, review a case. This patient presented for extraction of a non-restorable upper molar. The conventional x-ray showed a very close proximity of the sinus floor to the roots which was then confirmed on a comb beam CT scan. The patient was uh, advised of possible sinus perforation following tooth extraction and was prepared for its management in advance. The tooth was extracted uh, atraumatically and immediately following the extraction, inspection of the extraction site revealed three distinct openings into the sinus one in each root position. The sinus perforation at this point is managed using a three-layered principle. The first layer involves careful placement of collagen plugs or a resorbable membrane at the junction of the root and the sinus opening. It's important to place the material carefully so it does not get displaced into the sinus. The second layer is placement of bone graft particulate material, which is packed gently into the extraction sites with lateral uh, placement and as little or minimal uh, pressure down the axis of the root in order to avoid uh, displacement of the bone graft material into the sinus. Finally, the third layer is placement of another collagen plug or a resorbable membrane over the bone graft to keep it intact in the socket during the healing phase. Next, uh, cross sutures are placed um, 
to stabilize the membrane over the graft and keep it stable in this position. Patient is then provided with uh, specific sinus precaution instructions, which should be observed for two to three weeks following surgery. These instructions include antibiotics as directed, uh, nasal decongestant such as Sudafed for seven to 10 days, avoid forceful spitting for a week, avoid using straws for two weeks, avoid smoking, avoid forceful uh, blowing of the nose for at least two weeks, and also uh, try to keep the mouth open during sneezing to avoid potential increase in sinus pressure. Uh, slight bleeding from the nose is not uncommon after procedure, but usually resolves within a day or two. And also drainage of a saline or rinsing from the nose um, following the procedure uh, can occur, uh, which often diminishes and uh, stops within a few days after the surgery. The gingival tissue will granulate and heal over the bone graft in about four to six weeks, and the bone graft itself would heal uh, completely in four to six months. Thank you.